Are you guys thinking about getting cows for your homestead and you're in this stage of planning where you're gonna put the fencing or how you're gonna do the fencing, that sort of thing? Let's go over some don'ts and that will help you better understand what things you should do for your cow fencing. If you're using electric fence to put up the fencing for your cows, don't follow an established trail or path like this. Don't curve around a path or go winding down uh, the, the dirt road or something like that. Pick a point and fire a straight line and put your fence in a straight line. The reason for a straight line on a fence is if you're pulling the wire, you want to keep the tension straight. You want that wire to go in a straight line because if you start curving it, what's going to happen is you're going to put pressure on that insulator right here. So if this is on the outside of the curve, what's going to happen is all the time you keep tightening that wire, it's going to push further or pull further and further in towards your field and it will actually pop off that insulator sometimes. Now if it's the other way and this is on the outside of the curve, but you've curved inwards, what's gonna happen is over time, or as you stretch that, that's actually gonna cut into the insulator and start coming in and either touching the wood or the nail. So keeping straight pressure on that wire all the way along is going to better seat the wire in that insulator and keep it there. So as you can see me, the fence line behind me is not straight. And what we should have done is put that in straight, either cleared some extra trees or made a little extra trail or just forgot about that extra space that we had to put the fence and just gone straight from end to end. So what's happened with this one is the wire has popped off of one of the curves down further. It's popped off here too, where you can see the fence kind of starts to curve in again and does this. So the wire has popped off the insulators a couple times. It's pulled some of the insulators out of the wood as well because there's so much pressure pulling out that the wire can't, or the insulator and the nail can't hold up. What's also happened is on the one cedar post here, the wire has actually tore into the insulator and we've had to replace uh, the insulators a couple times on that because every time we tighten up the wire, it cuts it further into the plastic. I was just walking along and found a spot that basically explains what I was just talking about. Here is a wire that has popped off the insulator. So what happens is sometimes this insulator will get loose and it'll spin a bit due to the pressure or this one here is actually now bent down because of that pressure pulling the insulator out. So you want the wires to stay on your insulators on your post and not be popping off and going inside the paddock or pushing against the posts, cutting out your insulator and shorting out your wire. Don't use crappy posts, pine posts. We used quite a bit of them because we were clearing the woods so we wanted to use what we had. I thought the pine would last longer than it has. It's already breaking in multiple places. It's only been three, four years, I think. I thought it would maybe last five since we're on sand. And I've had to replace posts probably every year since I installed the fence. So go ahead, use cedar, spend the money on cedar posts, or if you're using T posts or something similar, Make the extra investment in your posts. You'll thank yourself for it in the long run. Corner posts, a couple things wrong with this corner post that uh, I didn't do when I should have done. First is, it's pine. It's not gonna hold up as long as I thought it was gonna hold up. Second, there's no bracing on this post at all. So it's just stuck right in the sand. It should be braced against that post and that post, and it's not. The other thing is these insulators here, I'm not a big fan of them after using them for a while. What I'd like to do is put on insulators that have the winder. So they hang out a bit from your fence and you're able to tighten them over time. 
Because what happens is you get branches coming down on your fence. You'll get snow loads, that kind of thing, on your fencing as well. Different things will happen and the wire will stretch a bit and you'll want to be able to wind it and tighten it up. These ones I cannot tighten up unless I actually cut it at the end or untie it somewhere and then tighten it up. And then when I do that as well, because this post is not braced and it's in sand, it just continues to lean further and further in, which actually loosens up the wire as well. Fence wire height. We installed most of the fencing on this at the wrong height. We installed it before we had the cows. I was thinking, you know, how big the cows were, not realizing that highlands are a lot shorter than most other cows. So this one here is too high. This one here is too high, too low. What we need is kind of one right here at eye level for the cows. And we need one much lower down here because what we found is our little babies can escape under the bottom wire. We realized after we had the babies that we need to rewire all along the bottom because it's not low enough for the babies. They can walk right under it. So the babies get out right now in a few spots. So we have to fix those spots. And then this one here, again, this is kind of over the top of their heads. It's kind of up where their horns are. And this one's a bit low for the full size. So their head is right here where the wire should be right there at eye level so they can see it a lot easier. If you have highlands, keep stuff away from the fence too. They've, uh, this water trough has inched a bit closer to the fence than we would like. Once it's empty, we're gonna move it back out a bit, probably another foot because those horns will do damage to your fencing they don't get shocked they basically if they're going to have a drink there they'll start drinking the horn will hit the fence and they'll start moving the, their head around and that'll stretch that wire out so you can see those wires are loose right there so make sure you have those winders on so you can be able to tighten those fences up and keep stuff away from the fence a bit so one of the things we've done too is we've kept a lot of the trees in this field and we've actually, you might be able to see it, there's a big industrial broom head screwed onto that one big pine right there. And we still want to get a big broom as well to put in the field so these guys can brush themselves off. You know, get behind that broom and let it groom them, comb them, brush them, get the itches off, get the knots out of their fur, that sort of thing. Because what'll happen is they will scratch a lot. And if you don't have anything in the field for them to scratch on, they're gonna use your fence posts. So there are times when, say out in the big field there where there's only a few trees, that we've seen them back up against a fence post or back up against the gate or back up against the chute, something like that, and use it to rub their butt on or their head on. Where if we had the brush, we know they would dedicate a little bit of time to going over to that brush and uh, getting a nice little brush off. One of the things I'll mention too, that's not really a do or don't, hey Joe, is uh, figuring out what kind of gate system you want. We have one gate that is a metal gate, but on these fields here, you can see we use the wire spring gates. And it's nice because we can take them both ways, but we can also hold them and kind of move the cows around the way we want them to. Whereas a swing gate, you know, it only goes one way. Whereas these ones, you know, we can kind of manipulate the gate itself to push a cow where we want them to go. If they're, we want them to go through a field or if they're out and we want them to go in the paddock, that sort of thing, we can use the gate to help us do that. So the wires are nice for that. But again, what happens is, is you have to have them at the right height because the baby will get under this one and she's done it a number of times where if we have the metal gate they can't get through that because of all the bars everywhere all right guys so i hope you enjoyed that and found that a little bit useful so when you're putting in your fences make sure they're straight make sure you have some sort of way to tighten up the wires make sure you get those wires at the right height and make sure your fence posts are braced and they're going to last hope that works for you we'll talk to you soon guys